I had to bring Jose back because everybody loved him. <laughs> He's the star. And um, also people were very interested on Tibetan medicine and how to incorporate the rituals into their lives. So I talked to Jose and he said that there are actually 13 Tibetan medicine rituals for longevity. And today that's what we're going to be talking about. But he just took Mambe, so he can't talk right now. I'm going to take it after. Mambe is um, it's like a medicine that connects your heart to your mind and when you take it you speak your truth and it's made in Colombia unfortunately it's not available in America so um, and he just got back from Colombia and Costa Rica so he had some with him I'm super jealous because you know it's been a long time I haven't been in Colombia how are we you might, doing? We might have to redo it because it's my teeth. It's okay. It's there. It's totally dirt. fine. <laughs> he has mambe mouth. This is so much fun because... It's the mambe mouth though. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is so nice to get it. <laughs> Fully natural on camera. That's, that's, that's the, the beauty. Way. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. Also, all our friends, you know, they'll understand. They'll understand. Most of the people who yeah. are following you, many of them know about They're this. All, right? Of course, of and course. And the ones who don't know, she they will just, learn. Yeah, they will learn. We'll do another. Well, we have to do a video on Mambe. Yeah, and actually, I thought about that. Right now, we're in a little bit on a rush, but next time when I'm visiting LA, definitely we should. Oh, uh, you're like my co-host now. <laughs> that means so nice. Yeah, let's 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 have this whole set sign deal now. Deal. Deal. Let's do it. Let's do it often. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I got a lot of questions from our last video. Mm-hmm. Some of my friends actually started taking sesame oil in the morning. Oh really? But very little mm -hmm, because absolutely. it has a, it has a taste and a yeah. smell to it, and mm -hmm. you have to get like um, cust accustomed to. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just that easy to incorporate things and it changes the taste. That's why I don't put it in my um, coffee. Yeah, that was, wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to love what you're doing, otherwise you'll quit. Yeah. Definitely. Like I used to take apple cider vinegars in the morning. And no. I can't do it. No, the taste? It just ruins my day. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So don't do that one. Yeah. So, what are these 13 rituals that you want to talk about? Let's start with one. First of all, let's start with what does it in, in a capsule? Like, what is this whole 13 rituals for? Okay. Or um, before what it's for, we can say where is it coming from? Okay. Because Tibetan medicine is really specific. It's super specific when it comes to absolutely everything, really. Tibetan medicine, I'm going to explain it really quickly so you guys know where it's coming from. Tibetan medicine, basically, it's a compendium of four tantras, four books, where the skeleton and the philosophy of the diet, the lifestyle, the therapies, the medicine, they're all found within those four books. Then the 13 advices for or rituals for, uh, for prolonging life, for longevity, they're coming from one single chapter of one of these tantras, which is called the routine behavior. Mm. So on the routine behavior, what they talk about is what activities should we undertake for prolonging life, for maintaining a healthy life, for really what they say is how to preserve a permanent health. Because through preserving permanent health, we are actually prolonging the lifespan. And now we need it more than anything. And now like we need it more than anything. Going. Yeah. yeah, especially right now, it's, it's really important to take care of ourselves. So the 13 life advices, um, we can start with number one. Actually, I brought this because I wanted to show to yes, everybody. Please. Yes, This is the translation from the Institute of Dalai Lama of the root text of Tibetan medicine. It comes with the Tibetan words and also it comes with a translation directly mm -hmm. from the Dalai Lama and so I like to keep this special when I'm talking about Tibetan medicine because this is like the Bible you know yeah. so like when you're talking about sutras or when you're talking about even the Bible itself you want to like sometimes quote directly what it's saying because it's really sacred word this is considered a sacred text in in Tibet especially so it's high vibration we are blessed to have it it is a blessing actually people just oh when they have books like just this hold it they hold it and they keep it up in in cupboards like they don't keep it yeah. in the floor or low below like yeah i never your... keep my books on the floor either no that's not no. good they, oh when i lived in nepal 
like I would put books on the floor or something, even put them under me to sit down. Oh my God, they would get so angry. They'll be like, what are you doing? Like, what is this? They would like give me a spank or something. So I learned very <laughs> no, well. No, they're sacred. They're sacred, they're definitely. They're sacred. Sacred. Now you wouldn't sit on the Bible, right? No, nobody It's the that. same concept. Each book, I think, has its own vibration. Yes. So you beautiful. have to respect that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, exactly. That's very nice. So. Okay. We start with number, number one. one. Okay, number one. I'm writing that down. Did you take a pen and notepad? Because, or yeah. you can go back to the video, but. But it will be good definitely to note. It's really, it's 13 simple things. That's what I want to really emphasize on is to know that these 13 um, rituals, they're really simple. It's nothing really fancy. It's nothing that will take you uh, lots of money or lots of different, you, you don't have to change big things in your life. It's really just how to prolong your life with the simplest budget, uh, low budget uh, way, mm -hmm. you know, that can be applied to somebody who lives in Hollywood, to somebody who lives down in the jungle, somebody who lives up in the mountains, like anybody yeah. can apply this. It's ancestral wisdom coming from long, 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 long time and through lots of like, trial and error and practice. And Yeah, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Yeah, no, thank you for I, having me here. Oh my it's God, lovely, I feel I love so it. honored. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, okay. Number one. Number one. And it's one that we already do, many of us, uh, but we can become more aware of it, is carrying spiritual um, relics or spiritual tools or spiritual, let's say, empowered items in your body. So like what? Like stones, crystals, the beaded uh, prayer bead uh, Actually, bracelets. Actually, my girlfriend Mariah, uh -huh. our sister, sells them. I will put the link on the description and uh, if you put Juliet, you get 15% discount. Mm, wonderful. Uh, I'll put the discount code too. These are all, everything I wear is from. Yeah, beautiful. Those mm. earrings are beautiful. Thank you. I have everywhere. No, so that's a way to prolong your life, actually. Carrying this stuff is to prolong your life. Yeah. Two things. Why? One, they're warding off uh, negative influences, yes. negative spirits, or whatever you want to call it, energies. You know, they're protecting you from these things. And they are enhancing your life when you're wearing certain stones. They are also protecting certain organs, like turquoise, like quartz, like crystal, any kind of these But you crystals. have to believe. You have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, it doesn't work. You know, that's that's something that I, I also think it in that way. But, you know, it's funny because my teacher in Tibetan medicine, he would say, um, even if you don't believe in the mantra that has some, some healing power, doesn't matter, it has a healing power. Maybe it's going to be very subtle due to you are not opening your energy to it, mm. but it comes with a blessing from other spirits. So there is something which is there trying to accompany you. Like, you know, is the spirit, maybe it's not inside of you, but he's like around you, you know, just of course. somehow like uh, taking care of you. Yeah, these I also wear it in the ceremony. And yeah. Taita always blesses them very each important. time I go to the ceremony. So, and I have certain um, beads that I only wear in the ceremony. Uh -huh. And I will wear them when I'm really praying, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are my like uh, praying tools on steroids, you know. Yes. Like I need to really get in and <laughs> put them on. Uh, but those I don't wear it in public. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So you're yeah. protecting them and enhancing Absolutely. them. Absolutely. But it's good. Carry amulets, even lotions with my, even essential oils, you know, with high vibrations. Those are also spiritual amulets that you can, yeah. you can be carrying. Um, if you have, if you practice some kind of Eastern. Uh, spiritual f philosophy you know you can also have secret mantras or mantra stuff you can carry even written down in the paper you can carry it with you or certain herbs like artemisia which is like mugwort you know some people like dry mugwort and carry it with them in their pockets oh my or god in their i shoes. have to tell you have to tell me all about this i'm like so yeah excited. there's so many like small things you can do and they're gonna haze your life and protect you from like any negative influence so do you have anything for love abundance health yeah for love and abundance and health actually one of the best things i would say is the sweet lotion as taita teaches yes yeah i wrote a book it's mm -hmm. coming out soon and i put the recipe in it oh for everyone to see oh my god so that's great yeah it's and called the sweet bath mm -hmm. um we do it usually before ceremonies definitely it clears the energetic body it brings sweetness in your life I do it actually weekly and what I do like Taita recommends three days in a row and then I take a three day off 
and then I do the three day bitter bath mm -hmm. just to balance the energy. That's great. But I put that in my book. Yes, that's great. It's coming out in February, hopefully. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Check it out, please. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Oh, you're going to have to buy one. Yeah, definitely. It's so <laughs> cool. But yeah, that so one. So I put that in it. I put the recipe That's great. In. That's yeah. going to bring lots of love to many people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a really important one. You know, the sweet bath for love, prosperity, abundance. And for gentleness and sweetness in the heart, in the thought, in the word, you know, in the body, mm -hmm. the way the body, you know, even we're going to talk actually about the body and speech and mind and it comes in one of the vices. And um, so the number one, carrying a sacred tool with you, with you all the time, all the time. Yes. You know, if you see photos of Tibetan women and men, they have beautiful, gorgeous, you know, uh, jewelry, always turquoise and, and ruby and, and jade or ja jade, jade yeah, all yeah. kinds of stones. And it's something cultural, but the, the, the meaning and what it, where it comes from is that spiritual power of these stones. Amazing. So that's number one. Then number two is be um, aware of the two conditions. In Tibetan medicine, they, it's like mathematics. Basically, it's like a architecture of life. Isn't that everything? Yeah, yeah, it's everything. So when it comes to disease, they say there is two conditions which we can control to prevent illness from arising. Number one is the diet, and number two is the lifestyle. So always be aware of these two things, uh, be mindful of them, and apply them appropriately for your life. So diet, eat accordingly to your body type, to whichever is your disorder or whatever is your goal so eat accordingly to that and that's a way simple way to prevent illness you know and mm -hmm. from there we can develop so much more you know like talk about different diet types talk about different herbs or supplements or or regimes that you can take to prolong your life or yes. to heal illnesses so i can do one suggestion for this um if you don't know what's working or what's not working for you i would suggest do a fast maybe a day or two just cut everything and then introduce one by one whatever you want to test you know um, and then see if how you're reacting because when you fast you clear all the um what is it called the clutter and the energy and your body cleans up and when you introduce the new foods mm -hmm. back into your system you will definitely have a reaction you will either feel great or not feel okay then then you have your list, what to cut, what not to, yeah. you know, eat. And I did that myself with certain, I have some food sensibilities, mm -hmm. uh, foods which I'm avoiding. And I did the same actually through fasting and also through eliminating certain foods. And then slowly I would add one and then eat that food for a week and then see how I was feeling. Yeah. And then I would be like, okay, this food is not the one which is giving me the problem. I'm fine. And then I would try the next food that I took away, you know? Mm. And so that's really important because sometimes certain illnesses, they are sparked through just certain foods. So eliminating this and figuring out in a, in a slow way also, don't be too harsh and just take out or take in or, you know, just do it slowly, reintroduce, it's not working, okay, pull it out and try another one. Yeah. You can definitely manage your health and prolong your life. So that's, that's a diet. That's perfect. Then the, um, the lifestyle. Then the lifestyle, <clears throat> same, you know, lifestyle, the beauty of Tibetan medicine is that they are always in connection with the seasons and even astrological influences. So in that way, we should uh, also behave. Um, our lifestyle should be according to these things. So for example, um, in Tibetan medicine, they say that during summer, because summer is so hot, the days are so long, we're sweating so much and losing minerals and lots of liquid you know, out of our bodies. They say don't do so much strenuous, like strong activity, physical activity, mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to deplete your body. There is a quality of roughness, which is going to start affecting your nervous system, your body, the yeah. liquid balance, mineral balance in your body. So that's a simple example. Just be mindful of your lifestyle. If it's winter and super cold, don't be eating ice cream. Don't be uh, like being uncovered on the cold. And I'm not saying don't do cold therapy. You know, this is a therapy. Yeah, yeah I was practice. just going to say I mm -hmm. do do cold therapy. And it's good, but as a therapy and know, and knowing how to use it. But in the general means and an everyday life outside, be mindful of that clash of elements, you know? Yeah. So you can preserve, because the body is made out of elements. Yes. And everything is made of elements and they're always communicating. So preserve that balance. 
and that's the lifestyle not too much exercise when you're already too stressed you know like maybe light exercise like yoga would be good but don't do over much because then maybe you're gonna find yourself again with like insomnia you know or feeling too like yeah, yeah, yeah also sleep i think is very important sleep is part of the lifestyle which is yeah. gonna come specifically in one oh they made yeah. a whole section, yeah, for, section it, obviously. for it obviously obviously <laughs> yes talking about sleep yesterday i slept in the in a room which was completely dark amazing and i slept like so good yeah i'm feeling really good right now so we're gonna we can get, tell yeah <laughs> that's good <laughs> you? <laughs> you're glowing no <laughs> we're gonna get on that one also. perfect so we only sleep in dark yes and i no electric no, no Wi-Fi, no no lights, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Good. You know what I learned? Mm. I'm into biohacking. Yeah. And I I love Dave Asprey. Who doesn't love Dave Asprey? Yeah, he's. So cool. I just read this book, <laughs> Superhuman. Mm -hmm. He basically says if you raise your bed six inches, so your bed is gonna be like like that, and you sleep like that. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night, when you go through the healing, your brain releases juices. So if you're six inches higher, it basically leaves and instead of going back into your brain again, oh. all the whole detoxification and your brain is brand new in the morning. Good. So because every, we heal every night. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially in the RAM sleep. So I put two yoga uh, blocks mm -hmm. each side. I don't even feel it. It's like really not that much. Yeah, so the six inches is just it, like a little my sleep bit. No? Changed. I sleep better. You felt the difference? Absolutely. Good, I should try it. Definitely. When I get a... a I'm, right gonna now, do, I'm, I'm gonna do a whole video on my hacks that I'm doing lately. You should do that one. That was really yeah, cool. Yeah. People will enjoy that one. And, and some of them are really simple that you can like this, just apply. Just like this raise one. your bed. Yeah. Your, your bed, head back. Just yeah. a little bit. Sorry for the wind blower going on behind it, the scenes. It's, yeah. But Don't okay. mind that. No, we're here. We're over here. We're gonna talk about also another advice is about loud noises you're gonna see how we're gonna relate that one yeah we're i hear everything it. yeah so okay be mindful of that and then in tibetan medicine is totally intertwined with tibetan buddhism and so in tibetan buddhism they talk about uh, the the trinity which we see in in many philosophies uh, some people say it's body mind and spirit or you could say it in so many ways in tibetan buddhism when it comes to medicine, they say um, body, speech, and mind. So that would be the third advice is saying be mindful of the, the actions that are coming out of the body, the speech, and the mind. So what this means truly, this is, that's the beauty of Tibetan medicine again, it's, like it's always connected with spiritual concepts. You see, we're talking about yeah. spiritual relics, now we're talking about uh, the energetic, uh, what we're putting out of these centers of the body. So why? there is a karmic influence in other words there's an energy consequence coming of every out of every thought we have out of every word we have and out of every action we have so being mindful of this means be mindful with what you're thinking mm -hmm. think beautiful things you know that's why monks you know even they are eating whatever or just they live long they're happy because they're work on their mind all the time all the time work on the mind peace peace love compassion connection so all these concepts they're promoting coherence in the cells coherence in the in the in the channels uh, subtle channels in the energies of the body the software is always upgraded. the software are <laughs> always upgrade and they're manifesting good things to come their way yeah so we're putting energy out of our minds good energy of course good things are going to come so hopefully through that practice you're going to prevent uh, not so good people coming through your way, not so good situations coming, yes. prevent sicknesses and stuff that can come when you are putting out other kind of energies. Out. Because as you guys know, you get what you believe. Yeah. You, yes. get, you get what you think about <laughs> all day long. Yes, definitely. Sometimes when I feel like I am fearful, mm -hmm. like there's a top. But at this point, there's no lion chasing me. There's nothing happening. I'm here. It's all happening here. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. But now I'm aware that I can see that. Mm -hmm. Before I was clueless, before medicine, you know, I was just like everybody else, I guess. Um, now when I get the, you know, point of, okay, where did you go? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Immediately I change my focus. Yeah. Something stupid, I change it. Yes. And then I can breathe again. But. The fear usually is the easiest one, keeps coming back, keeps coming back, yes. keeps coming back, you know? 
it's all in here. Nobody is doing anything to you. But that's great. So you are aware of that, and Absolutely. you are making the work and the changes, and that in turn is bringing beautiful things to your life and feeling and bringing healing to your life. Yes. More vitality, more happiness. It takes a practice. Definitely takes a practice. Yeah. That's something really important. We, we could uh, develop more in other videos. Is like practices for dealing with with the, our mind. You know, like for healing you our my mind. my partner now. Yes. Yeah. We can do a lot of things on this. We we're going to do lots of things. I think I'm gonna do a whole series with Jose. Yeah, that'll be so cool. I would love I'll do that a new so playlist. much. I would really love to okay, share done. this with you guys and with you and and connecting. That's amazing. These philosophies. Done. So wait, that was the mind. Mind. And speech is the same. So there's karmic inf uh, karmic. And a karmic outcome out of your thoughts, karmic outcome out of your words. So kind words, be truthful, no slander, no gossip, no lying. None of these things are good. No. None of these are, are you know, good. You know why they say spell it? Because the speech is a spell. Yeah, wow. Well, yes. So totally. what are you spelling? Yes. You're putting a spell. That's why I don't use curse words. Yeah. Or um, I don't talk about myself like, oh, I'm an idiot. I used to say that a lot. Yes, me too. And now I'm, if I say it or I say something similar, I'm like, wait, no, I'm great. I'm beautiful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not an idiot. No, I'm not an idiot. How can we say that? Uh, I used to say it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. That was like on autopilot. Yes. If I miss something, I wouldn't allow anyone to talk to me that way. But I'm talking about myself to me that way. That was like a big wake up call for me. Yeah. Now I'm like, I don't know. Oh, I was just gonna curse. <laughs> I was just gonna use the F word. I'm the F best, you were gonna say. <laughs> I'm awesome AF. <laughs> yes. And some people think that some of these things, uh, it's being righteous. And some people actually make jokes about this. Um, I do consider there is, let's say, a freedom when you get out of the realm of the duality, or where it comes to bad and good, you know, and, and it's a free expression. But we're still humans, and so being righteous to a certain degree, I think it's good because we are just trying to check ourselves always, you know, like mm -hmm. check ourselves and be better, better. In that process, you know, sometimes we become really strong, like I don't want to say bad words, I don't want to eat this, I want to do this, you know. But it's a process which builds a certain strength, a certain maturity, and and teaches responsibility, you know. And then we start to enjoy what ripens, what comes out of those good things. Yeah. So, so. it's very important how you talk to yourself. Yeah. I yes, think yes, totally, that's what totally, I would totally, say. Totally, yeah. Totally. And if you start talking nice to yourself, automatically you will start talking nice for everything mm -hmm. else around you. It's all love here. Yes. It's not a cliche. It's all really love here. Yes, it's not a cliche. No, no. I, I really mean what I say. No. I have no, absolutely no other thing in my heart. I'm like full of it. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, number four. And body. We forget Ooh. the third one because the trinity, the body actions. So be mindful of the body actions, very important. Body actions can, can. Yeah, this is more something's difficult to understand, like body actions, what could it be? But we also are expelling energy and that's why yoga, that's why yoga, that's why like ecstatic dance, that's why certain body, tai chi, qigong. Um, be mindful of what you're doing with your body. The body gesture, the body movement, it could be like, tensions or you know like certain tics and stuff that we're always doing and mm -hmm. what it's on what those things they're just building more tension building more yeah. rough energy on your body and they're not allowing the frequencies and the flow of energy like fl go naturally within you know and that way you can feel better you can be more clear you know you can feel more free not just always like oh am i locked in my body why do i feel always like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I cannot bend properly. It's many people who are really stressed, they tend to be not flexible actually, and that's all those body energies which are not being released and just building yeah. up. That's why yoga is so good. That's why yoga it's uh it's the best. You know, yoga is incredible. Yeah, if you're I not doing yoga, please do yoga. Yeah, that's I start I start also um just incorporating infrared sauna mm -hmm. into my life. When I'm in the room, I stretch. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. So it, it blood is flowing more and Trust toxins me, are everything going. is flowing when I'm there. Wow, so it's great. I I have to do a video on just that, the benefits Love benefits of the sauna. Yeah. Great. I'm mean, can't you tell? <laughs> yes, you love the sauna. <laughs> I'm you look wonderful, my God. You. I'm in love. Should teach me some of those biohacking yes. techniques. Yeah, I'm in love with life. Wonderful. I'm happy. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys are also in love with life and. 
if not through these advices can help the people to get more in touch with themselves and, and feel better. Yeah, I can't stop smiling. Good, yeah, so good. <laughs> Today we're smiling, smiling with the mambe face. If you see green around, it's the mambe. Yeah. We're gonna talk about the medicine another day. Okay, so number four. The number four is um, the sensory organs. The sensory organs, uh, they should not be overused, mm -hmm. underused, or misused. So why overused? Now we come to the loud noise of the uh, air blow. Uh, it was uh, the leaf blower. Leaf blower. The leaf blower. So that sound, you know, the sound of the cars, the sound of the TV, the sound of the phone, ding, 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 message, message. All those sounds are overusing your sensory yeah. organs and they're affecting their sensory organs. And now why managing the sensory organs in a proper way will prolong your life is because in the theory of Tibetan medicine, they say that the sensory organs they are the flowers of certain organs mm. and so that means basically the sensory organ is the outcome of of the of the organs on the inside so on the state in which your sensory organs are it's telling it's basically giving an insight about how is your internal doing mm. you know so some people have regularly dry eyes or red eyes or they have dry dry mouth or some skin issues or maybe their sensibility on touching is not so good, or they don't listen so much, you know, or they feel that uh, dee, that sound, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot the name. It's like a programming. Yeah, and all that is actually saying that organs inside your body that aren't doing so well. Oh, ear ringing. Mm hmm ear ringing. So when the ear rings, what happens? When the ear rings, it's talking about actually internal things in the body. Because these are the flowers actually of the kidneys and the, and the, and the reproductive organs. Oh. And so it's talking about the state. So many people who actually have lots of back problems and maybe some kind of problems in their sexual organs, uh, massaging with warm oil their ears regularly is really good. It actually promotes vitality and strength, you know, if you're about to do... Um, this is really a good tip. Yes, this is a really good tip. Massaging the ears when this whole video is full with wisdom. Yes, so yes. far. Yes, yes, yes. No Tibetan You're medicine. Amazing. No Tibetan medicine is amazing. You know, I, I'm just learning from Tibetan medicine constantly, constantly new, new things. You know. Good to know. So yeah, be careful with the sensory organs. Don't overuse them. Don't underuse. And we can take a, a simple example: monks uh, who do long retreats. They have to be careful when they come out of the caves or places like that because underusing, not hearing stuff, not seeing stuff, not tasting stuff, mm. um, it, it decreases the power. And it decreases the power, it's decreasing also the function of the internal organs to which I they see. are connected. Yeah. So don't overuse, don't underuse, and don't misuse. Misuse is don't do things to the sensory organs, the sense organs, uh, things that can harm them. You know, it's like don't apply things to your eyes which is going to harm them. Don't do things to your skin which might uh, harm them. Don't do things to your mouth or put stuff that might burn your mouth, your tongue or affect, affect it. Because it might affect also the internal organs. Yeah. So don't misuse them. Don't yeah. do something weird to them. You know, C Carry them with great devotion and great respect because these are the flowers of internal organs. So for the flower to be beautiful, the internal has to be nice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And for the internal to be nice, we shouldn't be disturbing the, the oh, outside so also. above is below it's so above it's below <laughs> so that's a really important one that's number four, four so number five number five it's a funny one i say funny because nowadays in the, especially in the western uh, culture and and especially on, on this modern era where we can do all kinds of crazy things like do parachute and motorcycling and like all kinds of daredevil things um and we're seeking for these experiences. We like the adrenaline. We like uh, to feel the rush. We like to feel extreme and adventurous. Though, we have to be mindful. So the fifth advice is about being mindful about the activities that we're doing, the dangerous activities which we're doing. So for example, and they give examples. And when you read the root text, it's funny because you can see that it comes from 2000 years ago. It's like, don't sail uh, dangerous waters. Don't ride uh, an untamed <laughs> horse. Uh, don't go to the mountain <laughs> alone without a stick. It's not like, don't, uh, what is it called? They jump from the airplane? Yeah, uh, parachute. It's no, not like, don't jump on parachute. And that would be like the modern one. It's like, don't jump on parachute. 
Uh, I mean, if you want to do it, do it, of course. I'm not saying that. Um, in Buddhism, they talk about the precious and rare human life. They say that a human life is so rare that it's more probable. This is an, uh, uh, yeah. a proverb. It's more probable for a turtle in the open sea to come out of the, of the ocean. And when he comes out, that there is a round, uh, like a round uh, loop, like some round like made out of seaweed or something yeah. that when he pulls out his head on the open ocean he's gonna go through randomly through something I that's see. like how is that gonna happen like how is a turtle gonna come what out and, odds, and yeah. end up there what are the odds so they say that human life is even more rare than that it's so beautiful and they yeah. say it's so, so precious value it value yes it. value it because it's precious being that, human is awesome it's awesome and not every soul get to experience this definitely yeah. that, according to buddhism they say that the human life is the only um, life form out of all of them. It could be demigods, angels, uh, other dimensional beings, animals, lower realm beings. They say that the human is the only one that has the full capacity for full and complete enlightenment. Yeah. So they say that the karmic, um, the karmic, um, let's say, the, the luck, the chance for you to get a human life is so rare and it's so precious because you have the full potential of everything. You know, yeah. you're like on the midway. You're not like gods and angels and which are already in a realm there. You're also not in hell realms, weird realms down there. You're like in the middle place where you can see above and you can see below. So you have like all the perspective and you can go all the way in. That's say. amazing. I love being human. I love having this experience. Yes, yes. God knows how many times I've been here, but you know. When I'm not feeling good, that's something I always remind myself. It's like, why am I not feeling okay? Like, let's look at the grand perspective. I have a human life and it's so precious and it's so rare yeah. and, and it goes so quick. It truly really goes so quick. Life, it goes like this, you know, and I'm, I'm young. I mean, I'm, I'm young and, and still I feel like one year to the next year, it's like, oh, it already went by, like we're already January and I just, yeah. I'm remembering January. It was like yesterday, literally. Yeah. So preserve your life as much. That means you're having fun. That, yes. Also, maybe that means I'm having it's, lots of fun. You know, when you're with the right people, you don't know where the time goes. Yes. My yeah, God. I know. It yeah. goes so quick, but yeah, preserve the life, please, because also we should preserve it because we are going to do great things. You know, like, for example, Juanito, Taita, um, who we follow and we are learning and healing with him. He's our teacher. He's very careful with he, what he does because he cannot get injured. If he gets injured, he cannot go and attend to the ceremonies and help yes. the people. So that's the thing. Think about yourself as so somebody. he's not bungee jumping. He's definitely not bungee jumping. He <laughs> used to surf. He tried surfing a few times, but he no, doesn't right. do anymore. Because he's careful about those things, you know. Because if we preserve our life and realize that we can do big things, you know, it's better let's live long and he's healthy. He's wild. He actually likes to, like, scoot yeah. and yes, fast yes. car. Yes, he's wild. When he was here one time, uh, we were I just actually took him to Beverly Hills. And we had these um, scooters. Yes. You know, now they have those. He wanted to get on one. We're like, nope. No, <laughs> don't Because do the this. drivers are crazy. You're not. We need you. That's so good. he didn't do it. That's good you, you told him that, yeah. yeah. I would tell him the same. But he's also. like a kid, you know. Yes, he's totally like a kid. It's crazy. Yeah. So much fun. Number well, six. Number six, that's when it comes to the sleep. Ooh. So the sleep part is really, really, really crucial. And definitely, as you said, during the sleep is when healing is happening. Yes. During the sleep is where hormones and circadian rhythms and sleep awake rhythms and and also digestion like the the insulin levels and all this stuff which is always like getting off balance you know they can actually be balanced through a proper regular sleep according to your everything needs. happens in sleep everything Did happens you know in sleep. we lose 98 percent of fat in sleep oh really if happens. you actually let the body do the work instead of like if you snack before sleep that's gone ruined because now body is busy with digesting the food instead mm -hmm. of healing you mm -hmm. that's why i recommend four to five hours before between your last meal and the sleep mm -hmm. if you want your sleep to work for you yes you totally, know totally. yeah that's very important so most healing happens in sleep totally no yes yes so in tibetan medicine they say people who have anxiety depression old people children uh, people who are scared or like, had a, a traumatic experience mm -hmm. uh, they should have a really a good amount of quality sleep then they say also if you are sleep deprived like if the one night you didn't sleep they suggest 
that next morning don't eat don't don't eat oh. anything and then sleep half of the amount of time that you didn't sleep so if you missed eight hours great advice yes if you missed eight hours of sleep then next morning then don't eat don't eat and then sleep take a four hour nap a deep four hour nap oh. and then there's also another side oversleeping which is also very important so for people who oversleep it's very important to induce fasting uh, cleansing therapies like purgatory yeah. therapies um and then also inducing induce um uh, inducing no um having sexual activity with a partner because that also is going to promote physical mm -hmm. uh, activity just like exercise so if yes. you don't sleep go have sex yes no if you are sleeping too much you're feeling too oh. sleepy <laughs> yes <'Cause some> <laughs> don't sleep have sex and then take a nap okay that sounds very good i mean come on <laughs> But now we're moving, <laughs> we're switching it around now. Oh my god, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's us. No, but if you don't, if you're sleeping too much, because oh. sleeping too much, they say in Tibetan medicine, it <laughs> it makes heaviness in the body. So, guys, if your wife is sleeping too much, you know what to do. Yes. Poker. More, yes, yes. Yes, no, totally, totally. And if you are not being able to sleep, then it's the contrary. You know, it's like, don't have so much sexual activity. Uh, eat broths, you know, <laughs> eat curds like um, yogurts or fermented foods and um, milk for those like dairy products for those who like dairy products and and certain herbs also to calm like it's very important to treat the sleeping problems don't let them keep going this is a whole another video my love <laughs> yes, that's a long video but watch your sleep for prolonging life too much sleep won't prolong your life uh, too little sleep won't prolong your life. It has to yeah. be the right amount of sleep, definitely. The most important thing, I think, for me, the amount of the REM sleep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, there are some tools um, I can recommend later. But let's go to number six. Okay. So, number no, no, six. Number six was sleep. Mm -hmm. Number seven. The number seven lucky number, actually, is about sex. So, the sex guidelines. The sexual guidelines. So, it is good to have sex. Like actually they, they promote sex, sexual activity. They also give clear guidelines about how much sex you should have in, during which season. So for example, they say winter time, oh, it's wow. a time. Yes, exactly. They say actually, it says exactly here, you, it's okay to have everyday sex. Because mm -hmm. during winter time, you tend to eat more, your body is building weight, mm -hmm. you're not sweating, you're not losing like minerals and stuff. So it's okay. The body won't lose too much vital essence. During summer, they uh, suggest once every 15 days sex. This is advice for prolonging life. Yes, it is. It is something. Unless for, and this is mostly for men though. Not you for know? honeymoon time. Not for honeymoon okay. time. Okay. Honeymoon is not, it's different, you know. Um, but yeah, during summer, you don't have to follow it as it is, you know, but just check how it you feels. You sex or orgasm? Because you can make out, but not finish it off. Yes. So you keep the energy. Yes, exactly. So that's the, what I wanted to mention also. Okay. Uh, but uh, Because I cannot picture myself staying away from the love of my life for 15 days. Yes, yes, exactly. Now I understand. And this comes a lot mostly for men who are l losing vital essence most of the times during sexual intercourse. For women also, excess sexual activity can also harm a little bit their internal organs. And also... It can cause a little bit of coldness in the womb space if there is mm. too much regular sexual activity. And don't take my words as truth. You can try it yourself. Try not having sex for five days and tr and see, check how your energy feels. For men mostly. For men mostly, right? You know, when it comes to the, how energetic you're feeling. Yeah. Then, of course, there is certain sexual practices, spiritual practices, where you can learn to retain, retain the sexual fluids, you know, and convert that energy into energy that can be used for your bo uh, by your body mm -hmm. for more vitality and actually prolonging the life though this has to be learned properly because it happens and i've and i've seen people uh, who have had problems with this mm -hmm. is that if they don't know how to properly do these things actually it can cause infections in their in their organs and give them really bad pains in mm -hmm. their sexual organs so Learn properly. Take your time to learn these techniques, and definitely, yeah. it's it's a, a tool that's going to prolong your life and hey and hey enhance your sexual life and make you feel very alive. But if you don't know that, it's very good then just to 
go through the guidelines. Don't have too much sex during the times that you know your body is more depleted and you can have more sex when your body is stronger. You know? yeah. So this, also if you are stressed, if you are too depressed, if you are anxious, if you're weak, losing weight, then don't have so much sex. You know, Take time to sleep, take time to nourish yourself, to meditate, to like Because grow. the sexual energy actually is a very healing energy. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't have orgasms right before ceremonies. Yes, that's because what we, we wanna, conserve that. We want to use that for us. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Number eight. Number eight. So number eight is about proper physical exercise and ingesting good quality fats. Nice. Exercise promotes good digestion, promotes, uh, reduces the excess of fats, promotes uh, a firm body, it gives you the ability to do activities easily, like work and go about your day easier, you know? Um, so it's important to have good amount and, and proper exercise according to your body, according mm -hmm. to the people. Some people are, are more slim, you know? Some people already have a bigger build. Some people are like medium, you know? Some people naturally, they don't even go to the gym. And I see people, they already like, they're muscular and they don't even go to the gym. Yes, you're that kind of body. Yeah, I have, I have the arms like I'm lifting every day, but, you know? but And that's a body type, we call it TIPA. We call that TIPA <clears throat> body type, you know? So we say that for people who have TIPA body type, which already is like a strong build, excess exercise won't actually do good. Exercise is good, but don't like don't work out so many hours a day no, every day I do too like, much. I do, I do like three days a week. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of hiking and you know that kind of activity. That's I'm not a big fan of running on the streets mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I love my cardio, but I like lifting mm -hmm. for sure. That's good. that's one of my favorites. That's good. Yeah. Yes, in a balanced way, it's really good. Yeah. And so proper physical exercise. And then another guideline, if you want to get really specific, like if you want to get really specific and in tune with the seasons and, and the whole changes that is, are going every month um, for prolong your life, they suggest that if you want to do intense exercise, do it during the winter and the spring. Then the, during the summer, it should be the lowest amount of exercise. And during the autumn, it's the, like the medium mm -hmm. amount. You know? Well, there are like seasonal exercises in the summer. They oh, can so. go surfing and exactly. in the winter they can go skiing and exactly. all that stuff. Number nine. So number nine, we're going here with the text. I'm loving this so far. So number nine is about regular oil massage. Oil massage is superb. It's truly one of the best therapies, self therapies. It's truly also an intimate therapy to start loving yourself more and like filling out your body more and giving care and love to your body, you know. And through oil massage, I've heard people who, <clears throat> who find that, oh, I had pain here and I didn't know. Oh, I had like a, a lump. There's people, I've met people who found out that they had a lump, ended up being a cancer. They were able to treat it right on time, which just by doing the oil massage. That's amazing. That's amazing. So what sesame kind of oil, oil? Sesame. sesame oil is the best. Regularly, especially on the head and on the ears. Special. So if you don't have time to do whole body, you can do oil massage in your head. No way. Yes, and in your ears. If you don't want to get your hair oily or something, you don't oh, have time, don't then just do your ears. By the way, if you get a massage oil um, on your hair, in your regular shampoo, just to put a little bit of dishwashing, like a drop of dishwashing detergent, mm -hmm. it will remove everything. Oh. Okay, good. Yeah. Yes, good. Like if you have excess products, build up, whatever. Mm -hmm. But don't do this all the time because it will dry your hair out. Yes. But the people who use this gel and wax mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And if you do oil and then it, it can't come out. Mm -hmm. Just a one drop of dishwashing detergent. Okay. In a regular shampoo and mm -hmm. then just... It can be Dr. Bronner's or just... Well, any I use Earth Balance or whatever. Balance. I don't I don't use... Yeah, something palm. organic, natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But... It's, I wash my dishes with, but it removes fat, oil, grease. Yeah, grease. Or, or the buildup. Okay, that's good technique. After the oil massage, when you want to shower. Just a little, yeah. Just a little bit, it's going to yeah. help. Okay, that's a good advice. So yeah, I regular. know some un <laughs> unnecessary information too. <laughs> I know a lot of unnecessary information, I don't know why. No, but it's good tips just to make stuff easier. And it just it cleans it out and then your hair is not, you know, sticky and yeah. all build up. Okay, that's good. So do oil massage. But don't put it on your scalp. Do it on your, you know. Yes. Like, just on your hair. Okay. Okay. 
So sesame oil. Sesame oil, definitely. Oil and massage. then the next one, which comes together with the the oil massage, but it's another. Uh, it's number ten, right? Number ten. So number ten, it comes. You can do oil massage, and then every so often, uh, after the oil massage, uh, scrubbing, scrubbing your body. It can be with those weird scrubbers. Brush. It can be a brush. Dry brush. A dry brush. Scrub. Scrub. This will uh, accelerate blood circulation. Blood circulation, removal of toxins, and it, it vitalizes the body. It vitalizes the body. Also reduces fats. Like it promotes the metabolism to to use up those fats. Did you know after um, you disturb the skin by dry brushing or scrubbing, if you put almond oil mm -hmm. and then shower, that actually detoxifies it. Almond oil pulls everything out. Wow. I learned that from Yogi Bhajan when wow. I was doing my Kundalini teacher training. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I think that's actually an Ayurvedic yes. uh, therapy. Yes, yeah. that one is very good. Scrubbing. Yeah. You can also, traditionally, they use a garbanzo bean um, flour. So the, pow the powder of it, really? after the oil massage, they put the powder and scrub the whole body. And that way it's going to start to clean, do all the benefits we said, it, it can be done with the flour. So Garbanzo bean flour, yeah. I love. That's how they tradition. If you go to Nepal or Tibet and you go to a clinic and you go through some rejuvenating therapies, they'll use garbanzo. Amazing. Yeah, they'll fill you up with flour and scrub your whole body. Two oh, people and you it. scrubbing your body. I love it. Yes. Number 11. So number 11 is the bathing. What is it? Bathing or shower. Oh, bath. So a shower. So um, showers, they promote body heat. Showers or bathing, it promotes uh, body heat. It also, the complexion of the skin, it makes mm -hmm. it nicer. It also promotes strength in the body and the limbs. Mm -hmm. Also promotes sexual potency. Um, of course, prevents cer certain illnesses like itching or fungus, you know, or excess perspiration. Also, mm -hmm. cleans off all the stuff in your body. Also, um, another thing to be mindful of is bathing with hot water ab above your neck in your head. It's not advised. So, if you're gonna, if you use cold, hot water for bathing, don't use hot water in your head and sense organs because it's gonna. Decrease the quality of hair. Actually, a lot of the hair loss that happens is because we shower with hot water here. And it decreases the strength of their sensory organs. Oh my God, this video is full of gems. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you it. so much also for having me here. These are, I've never heard of that before. Yes, yes. It's good. I'm going to start. I don't do it so much because I do like at nighttime. I like cold showers, but at nighttime I like warm showers. But I need to stop doing on the hair. I never on the do. head because I don't want to lose my hair. I do cold showers. <laughs> I do cold showers. And yes, and cold showers are amazing. Yeah. And the same, the bathing. They're not saying here uh, specifically about cold showers. You know, they're just saying bathing. But when you think about bathing up in the mountains over there, probably yeah. it's cold water or at least like lukewarm because it's already really cold over there. Yeah. But yeah. now we're on the modern. Well, this is a 2000 year old information. Exactly. Yeah. And now we we're. We have to adjust it. We have too. to adjust it. Yeah. Yeah. So cold shower, definitely. Go for it, study, research, and use it properly, and it's gonna enhance your life. Yeah, definitely. And also, another thing to be mindful: don't take uh, showers when you have a common cold or some kind of infection. When you have uh, any problem in the abdomen, like uh, abdomen distension or bloating, you know. And don't take showers or don't take cold showers. Don't 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 take showers. Like, so how do you clean? I mean, just bath. Just yeah, just bath. You know, but what, so what's the difference between the shower and the bath? I mean, that's a good question. When it, bath would be for in in English, I get maybe confused with the words. Like you soak in the it's water. Soak in the water. Yeah. But shower is. The water. thing is that mostly in. The, so when you're sick, don't shower. Don't, don't shower. Don't wash yourself. Don't wash yourself when you're sick with common cold or with uh, abdomen problems you like. Por qué? Uh, because the water. This it comes. To elemental understanding. So when they say a bloating, most of the bloating is an excess of mucus, excess of pecan yeah. energy, which is mostly mostly earth and water element. So the water from bathing or showering is going to increase those elemental properties in the body. So you can just wipe yourself, or whatever. so you can just wipe yourself, or just don't shower one two days and wait. You for... just take a bird bath. Yes, or just when you feel better. Even if you are bloated right now, wait a couple hours when you're feeling a little bit better, drink hot water. So or... you can wash your hair if you need to wash your yes, hair. Yes, yes, of course. Don't wash your body. Don't wash your body. You I know? see. Or with common cold, infection, coughing, like don't shower yourself. You I know? see. 
unless you have a, a, a protocol which you know you know if, if there's because there's medicinal protocol this is stuff for people who don't have a very deep understanding of certain therapies mm -hmm. uh, this is a basic guideline for them if you know that you can take a vapor steam and this and that and then you properly cover yourself and warm yourself then it's okay to shower yeah but generally if you have a common cold or a, um, bloating or ice problems also like con uh, gingiva, uh, like yeah, yeah, I know pink eye or stuff like that oh don't wash or wipe or do too much crazy thing you know yeah just to preserve those organs and and live longer you know not to make the sickness worse i see are we at number 12 and we are at number 12 which is specifically talking about the eyes so the eyes it's a really 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 important organ um because you know, we cannot replace them we first of all we can and they're just miraculous when you think about the eyes it's something crazy it's so fragile sometimes i just start to think by myself and i'm like my god it's so fragile anything could yeah. hit me in the eye and with the windows open in the car i'm like wow anything could happen then it's gone you know one of my gratefulness practice i always am grateful that i'm able to see wow that's beautiful really never thought about that yeah i'm like so amazed by it and it just makes my heart warm like i'm i'm, I'm able to see wow very nice Yes, that's. A, I'm gonna play that one. And yeah, because I use mindful. contacts. Yes. And I'm nearsighted, so I need my glasses to mm -hmm. drive a car or whatever if I don't have my contacts. So, yeah. you know, it's. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, take care of the eyes. So there, there is a, a therapy which they suggest to do once a week for Tell taking me. care of the eyes. It's a plant called kierpa. Actually, what is it called? Kierpa, but I'm gonna. We're gonna link below the actual name okay. uh, in English so people can find this herb. It is a shrub medicine and they use the bark. It is actually very easy to get uh, online. Mm -hmm. It's uh, available in the Western, in the United States at least. I know it's in Europe it's available. Uh, make a decoction with this plant. I can provide you guys with a recipe. We have to now. Yes. I want it. Yes, it's really good. You make a decoction with this herb. So if you have three parts of water, then you reduce it to one part mm -hmm. and then strain it with a cheesecloth really well so no derby so no yeah. dust comes through and then once a week you can apply a couple drops in each eye and that is gonna promote like cremation it's gonna also promote all the fluids because the eyes are connected with something we call the packing fluids so which means really all the moistening fluids of the body meaning in the joints you know hormonal fluids glandular fluids so this um, eye drops are actually enhancing all those other processes in the body Amazing. and I can protecting already... the liver yes. here i'm like pointing over here like protecting the liver right because yes. uh, eyes actually protecting the liver yes <laughs> protecting the liver what's the liver now i forgot oh. no, no. but really because eyes actually is the flower of the liver amazing and the liver is the one making the blood cleansing the blood it has like dust hundreds and hundreds of, of of different metabolic processes so we gotta take care of it so once a week do this therapy and we're gonna link so it below he's gonna give me the, the recipe, recipe. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna put it in the description mm -hmm. great while you read it actually don't forget to subscribe yes please. more videos like this coming and you don't want to miss it yes no school videos is gonna be coming coming soon yeah so that was number 10 number 12 number 12 number okay. 13 is my lucky number it's the lucky number this one is important and sometimes people don't pay attention to to what I'm going to explain. It's acute pro, uh, acute uh, disorders that happen. You know, acute means something uh, not chronic. It means something that I don't have nothing and then all of a sudden my head hurts. So all of a sudden I, something yeah, happens yeah. so I get hurt. That's an acute pain or acute injury. So treat immediately acute disorders. And they name so five. So important. Yes, yeah, so important. Why? Because they say that from acute they're signaling disorder, something. they're signaling something and they, can, they could develop if they're not well treated or if they're not treated mm -hmm. at all, they can develop into other disorders, worse things, and even death. They give five main ones. They say cramps should be treated immediately, uh, dislocations or uh, yes. uh, broken bones, of course, because if you don't treat it properly, then you know something some people break a bone they were not able to treat it properly and then, and then they end up weird the, range of motion you know they have to re-break it again yeah they have to re-break or operate it's even worse and then there's the meridians there's all the yeah. channels and whenever there's an injury the the channels are also injured 
and the channels are connecting all organs and systems yeah. in the body. So you got to treat it properly because if not, a blockage can happen there. And then some, some people really, some people have headaches just due to an injury they had 15 years ago and they never treated properly. Yeah. And then they heal that, all of a sudden, no more headaches, yeah. you know? And so that's, and a headache is an inflammation. And so then that inflammation coming from a simple injury can turn into a brain problem or like stress. And then the way you're taking decisions in life is through the scope of a head pain and stress, which is just out of an acute condition you had once. Yeah, I just find out why people snore. Mm -hmm. Because there's an inflammation behind the pipes. Really? Yeah. On the neck or behind so the pipes. So if somebody's um, actually snoring, mm -hmm. there's an inflammation in the neck. Wow. Okay, well, it's, exactly. they have to go do a detox. That's right? the third one, inflammation, cramps, um, dislocations, inflammations, mm -hmm. and then inflammation, all kinds of inflammation. It's acute. It happens when something triggers it, but it's yeah. talking about a deeper cause. So treat those inflammations, then infections. Uh, infection, it could be like a common, common cold infection in the throat, and then some people get it recurrently. You yeah. know, it's oh no, I my immune system or I'm uh, allergies. Well, there's a deeper cause behind all those things. This is all functional medicine. It's all functional medicine, yeah. basically. Inflammation, and then the last one is bleeding. Bleeding Obviously. when you cut yourself, excess bleeding, painful bleeding, um, anything related to to bleeding out. You don't want to bleed out. So you see, this comes from ancient people. Is if you're bleeding, treat it. You don't don't just think, okay, I can cover it. It will be fine. Let me reach home, walk three hours. Then you don't reach home. You die on the way. Yeah. So yeah, that also should be treated. Well, if you're bleeding, go to a doctor. Yeah, go to a doctor. You know, or yes. I'm not a big fan of Western medicine per mm -hmm. se, like the pharmaceutical stuff. Mm -hmm. But if I'm like if I cut my arm, mm -hmm. I'll be in the emergency room. Yes. I love Western medicine. Yeah. I mean, the science, you can't deny it. Yeah, exactly. But if you do all these, you won't need much prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. and Exactly. You know, you'll be good. You'll be good. It's the quality of life. It's not the quantity. Yeah. So if I'm going to live till 80, 90, 100, mm -hmm. I want to be well. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you so much for all this. Thank you so much. I'm so me. excited. What a video we just yes, made. Yes, beautiful. It was so cool. I hope it's recording. Yes, I hope it's recording. My God, can you imagine it's not recording? Oh, okay. Well, at least we had a great conversation. Exactly. Yes. I learned so much. One last thing. What? Which actually they say <laughs> here. They say it and... They say, just... always show up on Juliet's videos. Yes, exactly. And I'm going to say it in Tibetan just to leave like some uh, cool... So you can hear Tibetan. It's a Tuktu Chikla... So that means, and I'm going to give the translation exactly, one should not always follow a rigid regime. So you don't have to be rigid about, because that's also causing stress. Like I have to do this in five minutes and this and that and add this. And So don't always follow a rigid regime, but one should always follow equally all these healthy activities or whichever healthy activities you're partaking. Always follow them equally in, bal and in a balanced way mm -hmm. and, and partake in this. But also don't be like crazy about how be rigid flexible. you're gonna be. Be flexible. And we're humans. Like it's being. It's I think what they're saying. Just surrender. Yeah, just surrender. Surrender Trust, to what yourself. is. Don't yeah. fight against life. Yes. Exactly. Say yes. <laughs> That's what I'm doing lately. Yes, me and too. And it's working out. It's really working well. out for me as well. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see you guys on the next video, mm -hmm. which I'm just gonna. Um, convince him to do maybe 10 more with me I'd love yes it. i would love there is a lot of things we could talk about okay perfect. and i would love to share with you guys yes. thank you so much for sticking around if you stick around all this time but you can always go back and re-watch it he gave a lot of tips mm -hmm. and uh, i'll see you guys soon see you thank you so much thank you Juliet. of course <laughs>